the subject and why I do like cardinals. Um, so these are, um, OLAP tools are normally done in, are normally visualization and reporting tools as well as OLAP tools, which is another reason why OLAP is far more common than data mining. The other reason why OLAP is far more common than data mining is because data mining is normally done in SAS or SPSS by people with PhDs in statistics. Okay? These are hardcore, heavy-duty mathematical thinkers. They're looking for patterns. They're doing mathematical regression analysis, Fourier analysis. They might be doing chain analysis. There's all sorts of different analyses that they can be doing using SAS or SPSS and a whole bunch of data. From my perspective, what I've discovered is I can't hand them the entire database because SAS is slow. Okay? And analytical processes are slow. So what they ask for from me, which is an extremely difficult thing to produce, is something called a statistically relevant data set. All right? Give me 10% of the data. Or give me 1% of the data, yet have it represent all the characteristics of the rest of the data. Right. Oh, I found that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give me only 10,000 records out of 20 million that represent the entire data set. How do you do that? It's fun. That's why I get paid lots of money. Okay. Um, there are techniques to do that. Right. But that's an architecture side thing. Then, once I have the statistically relevant data set, then they sit there and they do their magic. And their magic, trust me, very valuable, very arcane. You can't just take a reporting user and teach them how to use SAS. Don't work. Okay? You need somebody trained in mathematics to do these things properly. Because, right, here's one of my famous anecdotes. Okay? I worked for a company and we had 30 of these data mining guys on staff, all with PhDs in statistics except two, and they were prodigies without it, okay? We had performed uh, a mathematical analysis on marketing data for a credit card company in order for them to do what's called pre-approved credit card solicitation. This is 12 years ago now. It was a common thing in the industry. Remember pre-approved credit cards? Yeah. Those are yeah. now. You still getting them? <laughs> My dog gets. Yeah. Okay. So the way this works is you take a large data set called a prospect universe, and you have attributes, okay, and you're not looking for a hard correlation, like if they're male versus female, or if they're employed or unemployed, or employed in this industry, or how much money they make. You don't want hard correlations like that. You want what's called soft correlations, which means here's 50 attributes, and I'll assign point values, some positive, some negative, to each of these attributes. And if the total value of that person in that formula is, a, is within a certain range, or let's say we break it into deciles, top 10% gets this solicitation, next 10% gets that solicitation, next 10% gets this solicitation, right? Sound good? Good. Yeah. You solicit the top 10%, you're going to get one tenth of one percent response rate, maybe. Okay? Because everybody solicited that. Usually because they're the obvious ones. That's why I said always go after the second, you know, 20%. Stay away from the top. Okay? We did this, we handed it to the customer, and they said, mm, we're going to terminate your services. And they turned our model over to another company which was, surprise, owned by their marketing director. <laughs> and uh, he took their mo our model, and he ran it, and he produced a solicitation, and he solicited the top 10%, and he got a 60% response rate. Oh my goodness gosh, how wonderful. They were overjoyed. The problem was, within seven months, 40% of those people who had become pre-approved credit card holders now, and drawn up high balances, had gone bankrupt. Guess which 10% he solicited? He solicited the bottom 10%. That's why he got such a high response rate. Okay? And it worked. 60% of them went bankrupt. We knew they were no good. We told you not to solicit them. 
Did he just read the chart upside down, or he had, he, just, that was his <laughs> he misunderstood our numbers. <clears throat> read, he read we it used down. negative numbers, yeah. and the more negative you were, the better you were. He thought the more negative you were, the worse you were. So he misunderstood how our model worked. Okay, but that tweaked something in our minds. Hmm, soliciting the bottom 10%. That's interesting. So we went to one of our big customers, which at the time was called uh, First Bank of Chicago, I think, which became Bank One. Okay. Um, at the time, we had 20 million cardholders. And we had, they had been our customer for like seven or eight years, and we had grown them from 500,000 to 20 million customers. Okay. Now, most of their growth was through acquisition, but a good 40% of the growth was because of us. Now we went to them and we said, you know, we've been soliciting the top, you know, not the top 10%, but that 20 to 40% at the top of the model. We've been doing well with that. We want to solicit the bottom 10%. And they're like, what? Why would you want to solicit those? You know, and we're talking about their customer base now. They were, we were doing a cross-sell for them. We want to solicit the bottom 10% of your customer base. And they're, saying, they're like, why? We don't want those people. And we're like, we know that. Let's solicit them and say, if you balance transfer out from us, we'll give you a 10% discount on your outstanding balance. They said, oh, cool. Let's try that. It was a $50,000 segmentation. We'd already done it, so it was basically free for us. So we gave it to them for $50,000, and they implemented it. And I think the cost of the program was about $5 million in discounts, all told. But it saved them $10 million a month in less losses. And they were getting a 50% response rate. Okay? So it's not just the top 10% or the, the, the good guys you want to solicit. Sometimes you want to solicit the bad guys. That is $10 million a month. We sat there and went, we sold this for $50,000. <laughs> we should have asked for half a million. And the guy's like, I would have paid $30 million for it. We're like, Value-based pricing. <laughs> That's where I learned about value-based pricing. It's not about how much work it takes me to produce yeah. something. It's about what is the value for the business. What will the business pay for this service or process? That's how I started pricing myself. That was a huge lesson. I mean, I started calculating, hmm, $30 million, uh, I have 9.5% bonus. <laughs> okay, here's the other thing. These guys are bad clients. Sales and finance department. Okay? Why would sales and finance be bad clients for a business development? They don't have puts to figure out what you're telling them. Well, yeah, sales guys are morons. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Sales guys are into here's today, right. here's my bonus. Here's what I got to do right now. Right. All right? I can't help these guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's not much I can do for a sales force that is only thinking about right now. Right. Okay? I'm predictive in nature. Finance is the same way. They're looking backwards. backwards yeah. Now, I can help them historically a little bit, but really what they're after is a status snapshot of activity. Remember what I said about business activity? I'm sorry, I'm not involved in measuring activity. I'm involved in measuring progress. Who looks at progress towards goals? Okay? Financial planners do. How are we doing towards our budget? That's, what, that's how financial planners think. What should our budget be for next year? Predict me. How many sales we're going to have, what our expenses are going to be. How, sh how can I budget for next year? I love financial planners. Okay? They're really fun to work with. However, my favorite guys are the marketing guys. These are the smartest guys in an organization. And if they're not, the organization is like messed up. Okay? Marketing guys are forward thinking guys. When I say guys, I say women too. It seems like most, like 40% of marketing is women. It's really good. And they're smart. Ooh, smart and demanding. You know? So. Marketing and financial planners, good people to work with. Also, these guys are close to the income stream. Not sales, 